Welcome into this Friday edition of the Oxford Exxon Podcast. Chase Parm, Neil McCready, Clark Ford Studio this morning. Uh, I don't know. We're, we're going to talk about something over the course of the next hour. We're in the middle of working, so I don't know what this is going to look like. We could have to stop. We could have to not stop. I don't know. Either way, we'll get through some semblance of a show today that is brought to you every single day by the Oxford Exxon Highway 6 West in Oxford. Ole Miss has a basketball game tomorrow against Cal State oh, Bakersfield. Right? Yeah, yeah, apparently. <laughs> uh, Cal State Bakersfield, Rod Barnes back in oh, town no. for that one. My point being – I think use, Archie's uh, going to get a call. Hey, Arch, um, yeah. you want to cover a men's game? Use your ticket as a uh, as a coupon for that one. 150 off a sack full or a steamer pack there with the Oxford Crystal. And, uh, again, coming to you from the Clark Ford Studio. We are uh, Clark Ford's in Amory, Mississippi, 662-257-1900 is the number. Um, give them a call. Ask for Corey Clark. Tell Corey what Ford product you're looking for. He'll send you a quote within 15 minutes in business hours. It's that simple. It's right to the bottom line. No hassle, no haggle. Get your quote, and uh, the rest is up to you. You can shop it around if you'd like, or you can do what I've done, and that is uh, hop into a Clark Ford today. You'll love the service. Corey is awesome. The people there are great. Um, they're just terrific. I, I, I mean that sincerely. I've got three vehicles from them now. Uh, Laura drives a Clark Ford. Campbell drives a Clark Ford. They're uh, just super people, and they'll be super for you too. 662-257-1900. So, yeah, um, d- guys, I'm, I'm so scatterbrained right now, to be honest. I'm going um, to answer, answer Mexican Narwhal's question right now. Okay. Um the Cubs thinking about trading Wilson Contreras. I mean, I get it. I'm just so sad about it, honestly. Well, what are we doing? We're talking Cubs right now? Just real quick. He okay. asked that question, and it, it resonates in my brain. Okay. I really like Wilson Contreras. It makes me sad. I get it, but it makes me sad. Honestly. I'm braced for next week. We're going to get to the coach search right now, I promise. I'm braced for next week. Everything tells me that the winter meetings are going to be active and the Cubs are going to trade one or two pieces of their core. And I'm going to miss those dudes if I'm genuine about it. And I feel sorry for Carson. It's going to be his first big business sports experience. And those suck. They suck. <clears throat> and he loves those guys. I do, too. I mean, they it's fun years, man. 15, 16, 17. Those are fun years. God, they were great. I'm trying to fix your camera. I'm working on it. It's cool. We're just kind of here today. I'll be honest. Energy's a little low today. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I hit the wall last night a little bit. We were dealing with something this morning that – um, yeah. we, we, we had about 10 minutes there. We went, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, oh, I, my God. No, seriously. Like, to the point of just, hey, letting you guys have the message board. We're going to give you 24 <laughs> hours. We're going to let you – we think it's okay, though. I think it's all right. I think it's, I I think it's okay. I think all is good. Yeah, yeah. I think it's all right. But it was for, for a minute. I mean, we went, hey, hey okay. It's got a chance to go ballistic today. Yeah, just got to hit the button and say peace. Um, It's kind of been one of those nights. Um, Keith Carter, Jimmy Sexton last night were in Boca Raton. Uh, speaking to, uh, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> Pinot Noir. Um, <laughs> it's that morning. I don't know. They were there. Uh, one of our lovely, uh, one of our lovely uh, subscribers at RebelGrove.com has blurry pictures of them leaving the airport, which is creepy as all hell. But hey, thank you. Right. Um, it's all good. So, yeah, it's coaching search season. It is what it is. No one can deny it at this point. That was was definitely Keith Carter's pickup truck. Um, yeah. so they were there. I mean, I, I, we were laughing about this a second ago. They were on, I assume, like Sean Tui's plane, and they're tracking that thing. And they even did like some false flight plans and headed headed to Chicago, and it came back to Memphis, and all this smoke and mirror stuff. And my phone just kept blowing up last night, and it was like, "Is that Tui's plane?" And at some point, I just lost my mind, and I just started like I copied a text and just started singing it to everybody, and I said. It has a Grizzlies, a Panthers, and an Ole Miss logo. Who else's damn plane is it? I mean, it was just like, I mean, all it's missing is a Taco Bell logo at this point. Like, I'm just like, oh, my God. Yes, yeah. of course. Well, and what I love is people go, who's on the plane? Like, well, how the hell am I supposed to know who's on the plane? I don't know. It was it was, it was, it was empty, according to a lot of people, for a while. So, I mean, I mean you know, it was, it's just getting stupid. <laughs> this is this is the point where it's all dumb. Uh, oh, just. Well, they know like you're podcasting. I don't know. What? I mean, I since when has that stopped anyone? I don't know. This We've is, been doing this since this 2012. This is the benefit of not having friends. <clears throat> Neil's camera's probably messing up. I don't know how to fix it, and right now I don't care, yeah, if you want to be honest. Uh, you can hear us. So, 
look, news wise, do we have anything, or are we just kind of kind of gossip and talk for an hour? What are we doing? Where 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 are we with this thing? I will turn it over to you. Okay. Um. As I, I, as of this moment, there are reports in Arkansas. I've not seen them. You have. Uh, well, somebody's posting that. Uh, is it Clay, Clay Henry? Henry is reporting that they are moving on from Lane Kiffin. He's usually pretty plugged in. Is he good? Yeah, he's usually pretty plugged in. Been doing it for a long time. Probably knows everybody that's anybody in Arkansas athletics and boosters and such. Um, I don't know if, if that's true. It tells you a lot. Uh, I still believe, and I've said this all week. I'm going to repeat it again. I still believe that Ole Miss wants to get a no or a yes from Mike Norvell before it moves on to its next move. I think that next move is Lane Kiffin. I don't think anything – oh, God, I'm, I'm going to jinx it right here. I don't think anything big happens today. I really don't. I think a lot of rumors happen today. I think there's a holding pattern today. There are championship games tomorrow. Mike Norvell has been insistent – that he's going to coach that game and be able to look his players in the eye and tell them that I haven't talked to anyone else. It's important to him. I get it. I actually really respect that, if I'm honest. I know fans are like, let's go, let's go, but I get that. That game is at 2.30. It is a uh, AAC game, which means it will be over around 7. Um, I would anticipate nothing happening before late Saturday night at the earliest. <laughs> My guess is that it's sometime Sunday. If you made me guess today, and I'm not reporting this, but if you made me guess today, Mike Norvell's the next head coach at Florida State, and barring some sort of a screw-up or something getting squirrely, <laughs> which, we, which is possible, <laughs> my guess— We've already been stomping on that fire a little this morning. My guess is that is that Lane Kiffin's the next head coach at Ole Miss. That's my guess. I am not reporting it. That'll take about eight minutes to get to Twitter and— Neil said, this thing's over. Yeah, Done deal. So let me be clear. I'm not saying it's over. In fact, it's not over. In fact, the conversations that I've had this morning do not indicate that Arkansas is completely out on Lane Kiffin. In fact, they're still very much in on Lane Kiffin, and they are a, fly, a potential fly in the ointment, a big red hog of a, of hog a, fly. Of a fly. But – Arkansas is the school that appears to be going, eh, this isn't trending in the right direction. Arkansas, I think that's fair at this yes, point. Yes, Arkansas is the school that, as of last night, was absolutely kicking the tires on a number of other people. And to my knowledge, Ole Miss was not. To my knowledge. Now, let me say this again. I could be missing something. I could be wrong. It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't. I'll say I'm totally at peace if I'm wrong because I – Literally, I don't know that I could work it any harder than I've worked it. I don't know that I could bug any more people than I have bugged them to this point. I've tried to bug them professionally, but I think I've – I know I've crossed a line or two here. Think so? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. (laughs) I know for a fact I crossed one just a minute ago, so. Oh, yeah. You gotta get yelled at occasionally, though, right? That's only that only makes it yeah, makes, if, makes it live a little. If you're a reporter and you never get yelled at, you probably are not a very good reporter. Yeah, in fact, I think is that my what? I think my is making noise. It is. I'm sorry. Oh, your computer was doing it. Yeah, my computer was making noise. I apologize. Um, yeah, someone makes the fluid joke. My, Mitchell Crowder makes the fluid joke. Um. The person I was talking to just a minute ago said it's fluid. Oh, really? Yeah. Why is that word? Is it fluid or is it? Is the situation really fluid right now, though? It just could mess up. I I mean, I get that is fluid, but it's not necessarily moving around and doing this, though, is it? No, but it could. It's more of like you're kind of running out of gas for the finish line and you got to make sure you get there. There could be a point where it kind of stalls. That's more what it is. It's, we're not necessarily jumping in and out and moving all around. It's on a line, and is it is it knocked off that line at some point? I know we're playing semantics, but that's yeah. what we're doing on a Friday podcast. Yeah, I, I guess so. I, I, I mean, I'll be surprised if Ole Miss's coach is not Norvell or Kiffin, and I would be surprised if Ole Miss's coach is Norvell. Because Norvell's going to have two offers. 
Hundred percent. Yeah. You all right? Yeah. Sure. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Was that from the person a minute ago? Yep. They say okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um. Okay. You got questions in the chat or anything? Like, I really don't even know where to take this thing right now, to be honest. Um. Taylor Ash says, Neil and Chase, have you heard that Kiffin has the offer in 24 hours to respond? No, I don't think that's accurate. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't believe that is accurate. They have not given up on Mike Norvell. No. Just keep repeating that. They have not given up yeah, on let, let Mike me, Norvell. Let me make this part really, really clear. Really, really clear. If Mike Norvell said yes to Ole Miss, he is the next head coach at Ole Miss. We've said that since Monday morning. It rings true on Friday morning. It will ring true tomorrow morning. I'm telling you it is. There you- are powerful Ole Miss people that want Mike Norvell to at least hear them. If I gave you a six-hour window to win the lottery on when this thing pops, what, what would you pick? Sunday morning starting at 10 a.m. to Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. You don't think it gets out on Saturday night? It's possible, but no. I mean, I don't. I mean, mean, if you told me it did, the problem is, right, the problem is this. Mike Norvell's game doesn't end until 6.30. And if he wins, it's going to be kind of hectic for a while. Which is 7.30 Eastern time. If he wins, there's a trophy ceremony. There's all that stuff. And this, I've said this all along, and this was confirmed to me this morning in 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 a conversation. This Memphis thing, and I know everybody scoffs at it, and I, that's fine. Scoff at it. It doesn't make it less of a fact. This Memphis thing matters to Mike Norvell. This team matters to Mike Norvell. It's, it's, it's his favorite team that he's ever coached. He loves this team. He wants to win this game badly. Badly. If he wins this game, he's going to celebrate with his team. It will be the biggest win in Memphis football history. He's going to celebrate with his team, with his coaches. Probably gets them to the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, he's going to celebrate with, with the coaches' families. It's a big, momentous occasion. If you told me that he did not sit down with the Florida State people until early Sunday morning with a clear head and a cup of coffee, I'd buy it. And then I think things move pretty quickly. Now, is it possible that something happens at 11.30 Saturday night? I mean, I guess so, sure. But if you're Mike Norvell, I do think if you win, you want to celebrate this moment with your with your team. And But then Ole Miss has got to go, hey, I get it, but we've got to, got to know here. We've got to move. But I if, mean, you're, yeah, if, if you're Ole Miss. Here's a positive for Ole Miss, and I think you'd agree with this. You might have even written this yesterday. I don't know. It's all running together. Everybody likes to do play this demonization thing. It's a positive right now that Lane, Lane Kiffin and Mike Norvell have the same agent. Yes. Because everybody knows the score here. Lane's not getting freaked out by Norvell. No. He's not jumping to something else. I mean, everybody's kind of working in unison in a way here. Kind well, of. and it's an ideal situation for Jimmy Sexton. I put this on the message board. Someone was bitching about Sexton. You know, look, it's his job. And it, it helps him that Ole Miss is out there as leverage against Florida State. If Florida State balks a little bit on something – he goes, hey, look, this guy's willing to go to Ole Miss. He likes Ole Miss. Ole Miss is a good job. It helps him with Arkansas and Ole Miss that they're potentially – I assure you Jimmy doesn't want Arkansas to leave the table. But on the other side, the pressure on Keith Carter today to get one of these two coaches done yeah. cancels that out. Everybody in that room. And there's pressure on Lane Kiffin to get it done. Lane Kiffin wants. He needs to get on with his career. He, he needs to get back into business. I had somebody ask me, man, doesn't he seem a little down or whatever? I'm just told he's ready to go. There is a big ball of energy just waiting to go. He's ready to get an SEC gig. There's a lot here. But Lane Kiffin has a game to coach at 1230 Central Time, 130 Eastern Time. I feel like Walter Cronkite. On... Um, <laughs> Saturday. On Saturday. So he's got a game to play. And if his team wins, it's the biggest win in FAU history, and they're going to celebrate that. Now, I don't see him as emotionally tied to his game as Mike Norvell is to his. No, 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 no. But my point is, is that does take some time. There's a window of time that Lane Kiffin probably, I'm going to guess that 
from the moment that they arrive at the stadium on Saturday morning to the moment that he leaves the parking lot on Saturday night, there's not a lot of negotiating going on. Fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Now, okay, what do you think here? I mean, I don't know, I don't know how this works. you got a better idea than I do. N- did negotiating to any extent, in your opinion, take place last night? Where you already have some baseline of a situation. Maybe not an offer sheet. That's not what I mean. But to where, hey, this thing can move pretty quickly on a handshake deal to kind of start putting terms in place. I think so. It's fair. I mean, what do you want? What do I want? Okay. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know the degree to which it happened, but yeah, but yeah I think so. I, I think there were some things that had to be ironed out. Plus, I mean, Jimmy and Keith are in a plane together for four and a half hours by themselves. I'm going to talk about something. Yeah. I mean, on the way back, hey, well, if we get here, what's... Sure. Okay, sure. Great. Nice. Sure. I mean, it's only logical. Well, Jimmy represents both clients. Keith can knock out two conversations at once. Yeah. Very handy. Sure. Um... This is, is, is you think it's the internet age or it's the names we're dealing with or what? Why do you think this one's in such a frenzy over some other coaching searches? Because this is this this is far and away bigger than anything we've dealt with to this point in the site. Because I think it's the first time. You're more of an Ole Miss historian than I am. I don't remember the Steve Sloan stuff. Obviously, I have no no clue. Beats me. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I was born in '83. It's the first time that I can recall that Ole Miss is making a hire, maybe since Tommy Tuberville. But Tuberville wasn't an established name. He's a the, D coordinator, right? He was the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M yeah. and was considered a, a rising young coach. But it's the first time since then that I think this is a big-name guy that Ole Miss is appearing, appears that they're going to get. It appears that they're – abandoning this what has recently been this trend of you have to be an Ole Miss guy, you got to be a Mississippi person, you got to have these ties to the state, you have to understand the unique history of blah, 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 all that stuff. I, I think it's the first time that they're kind of running from that. Mm-hmm. Say, nah, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go out and get somebody that's going to get people excited. This is in my column. I'll give it away. I talked to a national journalist yesterday who asked not to be quoted because of who he works for. He said, high risk, high reward. And he was like, it's, it's going to be cool if it happens. It's going to be exciting. And it is high risk. Here's the thing about Kiffin and Norvell. This is what's interesting to me. Tell me if you agree. Okay. I've run this by some people who would know, and they all agree. But you might disagree, and people in the chat might disagree, and that's cool. I mean, I'm right, but still, I'm kidding. Um, Mike Norvell has a higher floor than Lane Kiffin. Higher floor. Lane Kiffin's got a lower floor than Mike Norvell. Okay. Lane Kiffin has a higher ceiling than Mike Norvell. Because, well, I, th- I think why is because he has an ability, at least name recognition, and to this point that we're aware of, of recruiting a different level, my opinion. I've heard some names, and no, I'm not going to yeah, get Yeah, staff-wise yeah. and just Lane's overall appeal, that it's still there, which frankly is a hell of a credit to him because a lot of high school kids don't know anything three years ago. And Lane hasn't been a big deal in a while. Right. So it's interesting to me that he still does have that type of cachet with anyone from recruiting circles. And that's the right word. He also has cachet in large part because of his reputation, his family. He has, he has cachet with uh, – with players, with coaches, I've heard names of people that would likely be on his Ole Miss staff. Mm-hmm. I'm not at liberty to say those names. No, I'm sorry. No. I'm just not. I'm not going to do other people's work. Um, it would be impressive. Yeah. I mean, it would be like, whoa, where I think Ole Miss people would be blown away that this is the Ole Miss coaching staff. Not not guys who are retreads, some, some young guys that are up-and-comers. I mean, I think the staff would have some – screw the star quality, just some – some to it, you know what I mean? Some mm-hmm. some cachet maybe is the word. I think they would be able to get in on, on some – Including a couple possibilities where even yesterday I kind of went, ooh. Yeah. Get in on some pretty big-time recruits. Not saying they'll land them right away, but here's the other thing about Kiffin because people – also people say – I talked to someone today who who knows Kiffin really well. And he said, you know, the one thing that, that really gets held against Kiffin, more than the personal crap and all that. I mean, look, lots of people get divorced. This He's divorced like it's some 
badge. What's, what's it called? The red, the scarlet letter. Scarlet letter. Thanks. I mean, come on. Lots of people get divorced. People have affairs. That happens in life. But the one thing that really haunts him professionally is the Tennessee thing. And he'll tell people, apparently, if you ask, that he looks back on it in his career and says it was the biggest mistake he ever made. And the reason it was made was USC was his dream job. And when the offer came, if you remember, there were lots of other people that kind of, that, that job got squirrely and fell to Lane Kiffin. And Lane Kiffin thought at the time, this is my dream job and this is the only opportunity I'll ever have to take it. And so he took it and he regretted it. And to this day, he regrets it. He wished he had stayed at Tennessee and kept coaching that team, kept building that program. They had just landed the number two ranked recruiting class in the country. They were rolling. It was getting going at UT. The balls were back. And he regrets leaving the way that he did. That was 10 years ago. The question was asked to me, have you ever done anything 10 years ago that you regretted? Of course. I mean, I get it. I think this is a much more mature person today than he was 10 years ago when he was 34 years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, who among us hasn't <clears throat> screwed up stuff at 34? Um, I think he's, I think he's more prepared for it. I think he's more stable. I think he's going to surround. I think there's, if, if he gets this job, he, I think he is going based on talking to people. This is not coming me just blabbering based on talking to people who are familiar with him and who know him and who know his family. He's going to be ready to go. Yeah. Excited to get back into the league, energized. I think he's taken FAU about as far as he can take it. He's ready for a bigger stage. He's ready for a bigger moment. And he's smart enough to know because really smart people who he trusts have told him, you can't screw this one up. You screw this one up and you have to hit the reset, and bu reset button again in your 40s. It's going to be hard to get back. Yeah. I've got a thought on Kiffin and Norvell. We'll talk about that in one second. Before we do, I'll tell you about Community Mortgage, Oxford, Memphis, Soto County, and at Chattanooga. Underwriting and processing is done in Memphis, so you can look at underwriting and understand your market. A leader in condo financing, the float down option, and with rates as low as they've been in about two years, good time to talk to Jason at 662-234-2704 or J-L-O-W-E at communitymtg.com. I find my, I've got about... 10 word documents up on my page. A few tabs, a few word documents, got, a few things a, going on. I got a few things going on. Um, it's actually not even word documents anymore. It's just pages. I still call them word documents because. Oh, you use pages though? You don't use Microsoft anymore? No. Okay. You know what you use? Yeah, I use pages. pages. Yeah, yeah. I, I use Microsoft forever. Yeah. This uh, brought to you by Microsoft. I'm kidding. Wouldn't it be cool if Microsoft advertised with us? That'd be awesome. The 2019 Hoops SEC, I'm, my, my mind is just shot today. I can feel it. I'm just everywhere. The 2019 Men's Hoops SEC mini plan on sale now, just $175. Receive a ticket to all nine SEC home games, home SEC games this season in the pavilion. Visit OleMissTicks.com. Get your SEC mini plan for just $175. Calling all Jackson area Rebels. Join the Men's Hoops team in the Mississippi Coliseum on Saturday, December the 21st at 1 p.m. as they take on southeastern Louisiana. Skip the lines. Pre-order your tickets now by visiting OleMissTicks.com. The Ole Miss men's hoops team returns to Craddock Court Saturday at 1 p.m. for the return of Coach Rod Barnes to Oxford. The first 100 fans will receive Rod Squad shirts courtesy of the Ole Miss Law School. Tickets start at just $10. Can be purchased at OleMissTicks.com. If you need a gift for your kids this holiday season, the Oxford Park Commission recommends signing up for the 2020 spring soccer season. If you played with them in the fall, you get to rejoin your team for just 25 bucks. The uh, cost for a new registration, if you want to join and, and play on one of those teams in the spring, is $50. The leagues are open for ages 5 to 15. The deadline to sign up is December 22nd. For more information, visit OxfordParkCommission.com. We're also brought to you by Splinter Creek. It's a gated conservation community located eight miles southwest of Oxford, 75 minutes from the Memphis airport. SplinterCreekMS.com is the website. Get in touch with them. Get a tour today. 
you, you it's absolutely gorgeous if you think about moving to Oxford retiring to Oxford you need to look at Splinter Creek 601-898-2772 it's been featured in Garden and Gun Southern Living Architectural Digest 34 lakefront lots ranging in size from 2 to 25 acres, 650 acres of lakes, pine, and hardwood <sighs> forest. There's just a lot there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Check it out, splintercreekms.com. It's transition time at Dead Soxy. After their biggest sale ever, they've gone back to the drawing board to bring you new offerings for Christmas. Don't worry. They won't be forming any committees or doing any national searches. They already have this in the bag. So enjoy 30% off all your orders with promo code REBELGROVE and make sure to get the stocking stuffer he or she will love. 30% off all items, including already deep discounted sale items. As always, stay soxy. Podcast is brought to you by Tyson Drugs and G&M. They're on South Lamar and Oxford. Go get your flu shot. It's raining outside. It's messy. It'd be a good day for it to remind you if you have not done that. And you don't have to wait in line or anything like that for that overworked pharmacist. Instead, they'll get you out as quickly and painlessly as possible. That's Tyson Drugs on the Square in Holly Springs or G&M located off South Lamar in Oxford. You know, we talk about the ceiling and the floor stuff. I think I agree with you. Um, not arguing that at all. Okay. Here's an interesting, interesting thing, though. Let me talk about Mike Norvell and his stuff that's whatever. My foot's caught in cords. Um, what happened? My foot was caught on cords, and I didn't oh. need to pull because that would have been a problem. That would, yeah, don't do that. So, Laura has come over there before and said, Chase leaves a mess, doesn't he? Like, yeah, a little bit. A lot of cords. A lot of, a lot of stuff. I also have a lot of stuff going on, though. I have a lot of stuff. You do. Yeah. A lot of stuff. Anyway, So, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Mike Norvell's got this thing that hasn't come out yet. Fair? Yeah. It's still a ticking time bomb to some extent. Yep. You can talk about the severity of it, but either way, a bomb's a bomb, even if it's a small one, whether it's a hand grenade or an, an atomic bomb. Okay. Frank makes this point on the live chat. It kind of stirred my memory of it a little bit. With Kiffin, the stuff, which a lot of it's not even true necessarily. He just had fun with a lot of it, frankly. A little immaturity maybe, but, yeah. you know, kind of whatever. It's sort of out there. So in some ways, how is, I mean, you, you at least know what you're dealing with. I mean, in some ways, I could tell you Norvell has a worse floor simply from the standpoint of what if that thing blows up and it's actually a PR problem? I mean, I, you know what I mean? Like, I, the, to me, there's it's not like there's no inherent risk here with Mike Norvell. Well, yeah, because it's two different conversations. I mean, on the football field, on the recruiting thing, but then, I mean, overall, I mean, let's not act like we've got well, some perfect candidates in here. Let's keep this real. Sure. With any human being, there's risk. Well, yeah. I mean, except for George Washington, he never told a lie. That's it. He's the only one. After that, you got to go back two thousand years. Y y y y there's a flaw in everybody. I mean. Again, Lane Kiffin got divorced. That puts him at what percent of the adult population? A high number. I don't know. I mean, at least a third? Sure. Okay. I don't know. Lane Kiffin likes pretty women. I do, too. I mean, <laughs> most people do. Now, I mean, I think there's a difference, and I, th and I think some of it is really overplayed. It's it, the 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 image that people try to paint that Lane Kiffin's going to go to Oxford or Fayetteville or wherever – Oh, it's ridiculous. And and every time it's a, ridiculous. every time a pretty girl walks by, he's going to assault her is insane. It's I mean, ridiculous. that is insane. Stop. It's fine. If he has a date, it'll be okay. We're all going to get through this together. It's going to be all right. It, it just this is <laughs> it's silly. I think Twitter will blow up a little bit when Lane walks into St. Leo with some woman and here we go. I think social media stir could be high at that point. I think it's possible, but I also think this is a unique town in that Eli Manning's a two-time Super Bowl winning quarterback. Completely left alone. Still still in this. Other than some kids in a grocery store occasionally, pretty much left alone. I've literally watched Eli Manning walk Kroger and no one even bother him. I know. I've watched one little boy walk up to him and ask him to autograph something and the parents apologized profusely for bothering him. And Eli was kind of like, oh, it's all good. It's cool. It's no big deal. That's it. I mean, I've, I've just, this is, this town's different about that. They kind of leave people alone. I suspect people will leave. Thank you, Mark. Go ahead. 
I don't. Ahead. I didn't see. It. I, I, I suspect that people will leave him alone. Basically, I mean, as long as he's not an idiot, and I don't think he's. I don't think he's going to be an idiot again. I, I'm told he's really grown up a lot. He's really matured a lot, and he knows what an opportunity this is. And the people that say, well, he's using it as a stepping stone. So let's 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 use let's get into that for a minute. Let's say 44-year-old Lane Kiffin wants to be the head coach at fill in your blue blood program here. Oklahoma, sure. Alabama, Ohio State. Okay? Yeah, sure. To get one of those three jobs, he has to win at Ole Miss. He's got to be a good citizen at Ole Miss. He's got to excite a fan base at Ole Miss. He's got to recruit well at Ole Miss. If he does those things, what you say to him when he's 50 years old and he leaves for Columbus, thanks, dude. Of course. Look where we are today. That's what I, meant. I told you yesterday. We were kind of kidding and, and laughing about it, but – yeah, Lane Kiffin's hired, and he goes six and six, and he goes eight and four, and then he goes ten and two, and he takes the Ohio State job. You go, okay, thanks, Thanks. Next. awesome. Next. Let's go get the next dude. Yeah, who's the next you? Let's yeah. Go grab that cat. Let's go get somebody that's going to keep people excited. Yeah, I mean, whatever. And at that point, your program's kind of a national contender, and it's going to be you're going to have a a big pool. Yeah, had no none of the NCAA stuff done whatever, and then at the end of 2015, Hugh Freeze just leaves. You'd have gotten a good coach. Everybody go, hey, come out of the dang Sugar Bowl. All right, yeah, of course. Go play. Well, you're going to pay me $5 million a year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean. Oh, good. And then when people say, well, you know, what if it, what if it, like the person that said high risk, high reward, my response is kind of like, what's the risk? Really? Where are you right now? I mean, there's not much further to fall. Like a prominent Ole Miss booster told me yesterday, he goes, everybody keeps talking about rock bottom. God, we're there. If this isn't rock bottom, what is? And would it be that much further than where they are today? I mean, the difference, what's the difference between four and eight and two and ten, really? <laughs> I mean, you know, what? Boy, that Vanderbilt game really resonates today, doesn't it, boys and girls? I'm everybody pretty pumped up about that. Thank you, Austin. Appreciate you. I mean, Arkansas is at I, rock bottom, but Ole Miss is I, four and eight. It's not that far from rock bottom. A buddy just texted me this. I can't. He's right. I can't wait for tomorrow as we watch as we watch championship games across the country and <laughs> overreact to scores tomorrow. When UAB drives yeah, down the U, field, yeah, UAB goes down, and you and Bill Clark and UAB beat Lane forty-one to twelve tomorrow. Everybody goes, "Oh my God, Bill Clark, Ooh, go get Bill Clark, go get Bill Clark." Well, I mean, cause, dude, we were all at Christmas parties that night. Longo had that game when Everybody James Madison just hammered Sam Houston State. That Everybody kind of had a point that night. Yeah, like we're sitting around watching that, going, "Oh my God, they look awful." Yeah. And part of you goes, hey, you're overreacting. Part of you went, I don't oh, know. Well, that's a little different deal. Yeah, that, that wasn't good. So, yeah, tomorrow we get uh, – tomorrow we, I, I, I need I need Norvell and Lane to go both win some conference championships tomorrow. I need to go win some football games tomorrow. Yeah, it, I am kind of excited for Cincinnati-Memphis, actually. Oh, it's it should be a be, good game. It's going to be good, a good game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's good games tomorrow. I mean, it's actually a pretty good game tonight. Utah and Oregon's a good I game tonight. Well, it's big for Utah. Baylor, or, Baylor Oklahoma's a good game tomorrow. Um UAB, FAU is obviously interesting here for a number of reasons. Cincy and Memphis. Georgia and LSU play tomorrow. And he touched on it. Um, I don't think Ohio State, Wisconsin is all that entertaining. But good games early. Did you pick Did you pick all the favorites pretty much to I cover? Can't I can't remember. That's been. Dude, that was. I, I let Isabel do that. She was trying to decide whether to hire her new assistant. <laughs> the 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 <laughs> I'm sorry guys again we're we're kind of stir crazy at this point um Michael thank you very much it's very kind of you we've been on the phone a lot we've been talking to each other way yeah. too much this I, is, I don't this remember is, who I picked in games I'm sorry you really don't I do you? swear to god I don't you'll have to refresh my memory oh, I don't know I'll, I'll I don't go look at it are we gonna like? I think I picked Utah tonight. Let's say this thing doesn't go squirrely, which I know for Ole Miss people is a very scary proposition because stuff happens. But let's say it doesn't go squirrely, and they get Norvell or Kiffin, and this thing finishes pretty good shape for us, good shape for Ole Miss. Everybody happy? Do we like? Do, what, what do we send Gabe? Is it mini muffins, a box of a, a fruit basket? What 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 do we send in Mister D Armand? Is his uh, well, 
Because a little, little update here for anybody who has not been following Missouri, because we're friends with Gabe. We follow Missouri much closer than we probably should or for any reason why we do. They sent to the board of chancellors or whatever, their, their trustee people, they sent Jeff Munkin, Blake Anderson, and Skip Holtz as the three coaches to gauge some reaction and some interest. Oh, my God. Well, let me say this about Gabe before everybody feels too terribly sorry well, for Well, okay, good point. It, it's almost kind of like feeling bad for the coach that was just fired. Not Matt Luke, but in general, the coach that was fired that made like $15 million. Kenneth, thank you very much, sir. It's very kind of you. Uh, Gabe has added about 500 subscribers in the last week. He's all right. And as he said, he's he's covered the circus before. <laughs> Well, Missouri kind of expects the circus, even more than Ole Miss. Missouri sort of expects the circus. They like, hit the it's, reset it's, button publicly on their on their search. Oh, no, the, we, the, the, yeah. stop. Yeah, we don't like any of these dudes. Start over. Whoa. So whoa. then if you go back to any of those dudes, that dude's like, well, hold on. Yeah. Do you really want, I mean. And they're now they're starting to get played a little. Oh, they're a train wreck. I'm not sure that this moment and I don't mean this to be someone asked for the word. Here it comes. You're welcome. If, if you're playing uh, Oxford Exxon Podcast, Podcast Bingo. Bingo. I don't mean this to be hyperbolic. I don't know that they could get Will Healy today. Come on. I'm, I'm not making that up. 34-year-old Will Healy going to turn down Missouri? An SEC gig? I'm not making it up. They're still a bad fit for the conference. Yeah, They're in the wrong conference. They need to go to the big Ten. They should be a Big Ten school. Yeah. That's what they should be. They fit there. They wanted to go to the Big Ten. Yeah, sure. But once the SEC said, hey, we're going to cut you a big check, you want to come? Yes. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I'd like to be in that conference. Well, their choice was, at the time, Big 12 or or SEC. That was a no-brainer. Well, I was reading their little, their columnist guy, uh, Joe Alljasper, today, and he made mention that Barry Odom went 4-0 and against Arkansas in this made-up rivalry game. And that's never even come up in conversation with anyone. It's like, well, okay, great. Ed Orgeron made a good point that night. Everybody was like, that's trash talk. But Ed was like, hey, you guys didn't celebrate with the boot. And he's like, well, we don't celebrate beating Arkansas. They hadn't won a game in a long time. They hadn't beaten anybody in a long time. In fairness to Ed, that is a true statement. I mean, would anybody like to dispute that? The last time they won was that comeback weird game in Oxford in 2017. That was the last time they beat anybody. Colorado State fired Mike Bobo. Can't lose to Arkansas. <laughs> That's a fireable offense. That's funny. That's good. Talk about a star falling. Bobo took the wrong job, had some health stuff, has sucked. Yeah. I mean, that dude was in play a few years ago for some SEC gigs. Really nice guy. And I'm almost to the conclusion of don't hire nice guys. Ooh, there's a take. Yeah. What do you mean? Elaborate. I don't know. All the nice guys get fired. Matt Luke, super nice guy. Chad Morris, from all accounts, is a really nice person. I don't know that it works. Nobody's ever accused Kirby Smart of being a nice guy. No one ever has said, what a nice guy. No one's ever accused Jeremy Pruitt of being a nice guy, and he's kind of got Tennessee moving. You ever heard anybody go, hey, I tell you what, that Nick Saban, he's a teddy bear. Ever heard anybody say that? Teddy bear. Ed Orgeron, what a super guy. I think there's a decent chance. I'm going to use this as an example because I've been critical of Orgeron and I thought he would fail at LSU and I was dead wrong and I have admitted it. Mm -hmm. Ed Orgeron learned a whole lot a whole lot from his mistakes at Ole Miss. I'm just going to bet you that Lane Kiffin has learned a whole lot from his mistakes at different stops. I bet you he's more ready for this stage than people think he is. I hear people say it's going to be a train wreck. It's going to be a train wreck. And it might be. Kind of doubt it. I don't know. Something about it tells me it's not going to be a train wreck. I keep hearing names of assistant coaches that could join his staff. And if, if, one-third of these names are accurate. Well, look, whether it's Ole Miss or Arkansas or it's another year before he gets a gig, he's been preparing for this step since he got to Florida Atlantic. I mean, he that was, was going, he's going to be a two- or three-year three, three year placeholder. He was going to win some games because, frankly, he's cocky and he knew he was going to win some games. 
and he was going to get out and he was going to get another opportunity. So be in the best place to do that when the time comes. And I mean, this, this is this is not complicated. No. I mean, he, he's had he's, – he's a football family name, knows everybody, and yep. has had realistically 24 months to get ready for this. Yeah. Okay. He took a Raiders job when he was too young. He wasn't ready. Yeah, of course. We all would have taken that gig when yeah. offered. Do you fault him for taking it? Yeah. Hey, you can be an NFL head football and, coach. And since then, please give me the list of Raiders coaches who have won big. I'll wait. There isn't one. Okay. Went to Tennessee. Screwed up. We admitted that. But he was winning. Went to USC and won on sanctions. Got fired, left on the tarmac, et cetera. Nick Saban picks him up. Nick Saban was hitting a little bit of a wall. Needed to revolutionize their offense. Who did he hire? Nick Saban can hire damn near anybody he wants to. <clears throat> Coaches don't aren't crazy about working for him, but they know it is great on the resume. Nick Saban's got a big tree. Look at the Saban tree. Mike Loxley gets the Maryland job. Mike Loxley does not get the Maryland job if he works any for anyone other than Nick Saban. It's a good point here. That that USC gig, they lost 30 scholarships. Not 13, 30. And they still won games. And they had that one season where they were preseason number one, which is the media's fault, and they went seven and six. Yeah. It tumbled. It tumbled. We'll uh, continue in one second. I'll tell you about MasterCut's Lawn and Landscape from Lawn Care throughout northern Mississippi. But with the weather like it is and the time of year, they do a lot more as well, including custom playgrounds, retaining walls, get your pool decks ready for summer, or really any outdoor living space, paper patios, forestry mulching, and much more. Patch your dream backyard easier than you think with MasterCut's. That's GoMasterCuts.com for a free quote of that same free quote at 662-607-7773. We're in December and Christmas is sneaking up on us and our friends at Blue Delta have you covered for a limited time. Blue Delta Jeans is offering gift cards for their bespoke raw denim jeans for $100 off. This is a great way to treat your friends and family with a great Mississippi-made product for the holidays. Drop by the uh, Oxford Studios to uh, purchase or get in touch with Blue Delta on their social media or at info at Blue Delta Jeans to have uh, Blue Delta Jeans dot com, I should say, to have a gift card mailed to you. As always, Blue Delta's on the road this week, San Diego, San Jose, Asheville, Nashville and Dallas. So if you're in one of those markets, give Blue Delta a, a shout and um, get fitted for your own custom jeans. Chase referenced picks, which are up on the site somewhere. And we picked somebody. And they are brought to you by Southern Craft Stove and Tap. It's located off Highway 7 and Sisk Avenue. Southern Craft Stove and Tap places an emphasis on food and atmosphere, mixing the quality of fine dining with the come-as-you-are environment, featuring 30 craft beers, offering a high-quality selection of cuisine and libations. Southern Craft Stove and Tap has you covered for any occasion. Join them for lunch, dinner, Sunday brunch, or have your favorites catered out. Catering orders placed online currently receive $25 off any order, totaling $100 or more. So avoid the chaos of parking on the square. Head over and experience carefully crafted dishes with your favorite southern ingredients at Southern Craft Stove and Tap, Highway 7 and Sisk Avenue in Oxford. We're also brought to you by Pinnacle Trust. Pinnacle Trust is home to Pinnacle Trust 401k advisory services. If your, 401, your company's 401k is not performing up to uh, your standards or to your wishes, get in touch with the people at Pinnacle. They uh, can help. Plan sponsors benchmark their current 401k plan, consult on current plan designs, provide ongoing plan and investment fund reviews, manage employee communication and investment education, and conduct a plan sponsor fiduciary analysis for you. All you got to do is get in touch with them, and uh, they'll come in and they'll conduct a complimentary, no obligation benchmarking and analysis of your current 401k plan. Mention that you heard about Pinnacle Trust on the Oxford Exxon podcast. You get 10% off your first year's fees. It's pintrust.com, P I N N trust.com. So, um, let's see, a couple other things. We're, we're going here. Trisha, thank you very much. It was very kind of you. Tyler as well. Tyler, um, I didn't see Tyler. I was reading. You were reading? Yep. Uh, you think you have your ads memorized where you could do them without? I mean, working? I have all the numbers and the websites memorized for yeah. sure. I mean, yeah. I'm kind of paying attention and it's sort of there if I need it, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, 
apparently Jeffrey has allowed Leah to have a Leah to have a uh, message board um viewing now. So uh Twitter's blowing up. Had a let's see. I had something. What was I trying to talk about? Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought a little bit this morning. Um as we're going on a couple things were popping up in my messages that I didn't need to to let go. Um <clears throat> Question asked in the live chat. No, I think everybody knows the score. I don't think at all that Kiffin's ego would be ruffled by Norvell being number one. Um, it's it, it, it is what it is. It's a business. I mean, Lane knows that better than pretty much anybody at this yeah. point. So yeah, no, yeah. it's uh, it's just hey, let's figure it out. Let's find the best spot and let's let's just move on and get it done. I've not heard from one person that yeah. that's even the slightest of issues. Look, Lane Lane's ego has been bruised. I mean, it's been knocked down. I mean, this isn't the ego of Lane Kiffin at thirty four. No. I mean, he's been been through some stuff at this point. I mean, human stuff. I mean, you know, it is what it is. Not robots. I was talking to a coach of the day and said, you know, I mean, even with you know new coaches and stuff going on. I mean, families, lives. I mean, this sure. is not just hey, show up and coach every day. I mean, you get you get knocked down pretty good. Um, I do anticipate us probably doing a hand raise guys on Saturday night. Yes, um, we'll, we'll do one Saturday night regardless. Yeah, we'll have some fun. We might know something. We might not. We'll all sit around and watch some conference championship games and see what pops. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll talk to you on Saturday night for sure. I anticipate having one on Saturday night and another one on Sunday night. Do you really? Yeah. Because even if it happens Saturday night, there will be plenty to talk about on Sunday night. And if. And in that scenario, there's probably a Monday press conference. And if I it's would one guess. of those two dudes, we'll just hang with you. We'll yeah. just we'll grab a bottle and just chill, and we'll we'll leave it open, and we'll talk, and we'll hang out. And I told Chase we've done hand raise guys. I don't know how many times now, eight maybe. I don't know. We've never done a happy hand raise guys. Oh, ever? I mean, we they yeah. I know they beat New Mexico State. That doesn't really. Count. That's the only win we have done is New yeah. Mexico State. Because <laughs> we did the first one was Missouri, A and M. Is it A&M? Or Missouri. No, it was, a, it was Missouri. Sorry, yeah, you're right. Yeah, Missouri, Missouri, they lost. Then A&M. A&M, they lost. Kind of the same way they lost to Missouri. We did Auburn. Auburn, which was a loss. Which New was Mexico kind of the, State, LSU, Because at that point, State. we were like, oh, see, they're all the same. And yeah, then they yeah, beat yeah. New Mexico State. And then we did LSU and, and Mississippi State. Then we did Matt Luke getting fired. So this will be the first one that if it's Kiffin. One of those two. If it's Norvell, too. Yeah. I mean. And I'm telling you. keep you. kind of pushing Norvell well, out to the I side. Just, I you think just Mike keep... Norvell's going to Florida State. I, I'm. I, I I couldn't report it, but I could get really close right now. They're not organized like Tennessee was, like even Ole Miss is for Kiffin in a lot of ways. Do you feel like fan fallout at Florida State would do anything to slow this down? Because they do not want Norvell. But they're but it's not overwhelming. It's not overwhelming, A, and it's because Florida State does not understand what Florida State is. Its fan base just sees a title five years ago, just sees the Bobby Bowden era to some extent. Florida State has fallen. You gotta get. They're they're not back. They're not. They're not one of like you said one of those five programs off the tip of our tongue. Right. Not a bad program by any means, but well, six years know ago, know who you are. Six years ago, if I'd said, "Hey, name the top ten programs in the country," you would have absolutely said Florida State. Of course, no question. Today, if I say, "Tell me the top ten jobs nope. in the country," it's Alabama, Clemson, LSU, Georgia, Florida. Um. Ohio State, help me, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yeah. Probably Oregon because of the investment, maybe. If you could have Oregon or Florida State, which job would you take? Oregon. I think so, too. I, Close, but I think Florida Oregon. State has a much higher recruiting ceiling is the only thing that kind of stops Oregon's got more money. Well, than damn near anybody. If you could have Michigan or Florida State, which job Michigan. would you take? If you could have Penn State or Florida State, which job would you take? Penn State. If you could have Wisconsin or Florida State, which job would you take? Ooh. Which job's steadier? Wisconsin's pretty steady. They know who they are. They stay with who they are. Thank you. If you could have – I like this game. This is fun. Let's play it for a minute. I'm humoring myself. Forgive me, everyone. We would be watching Virginia, Clemson, and Ohio State, Wisconsin on Saturday night. That's what we'd have. If you could have Tennessee or Florida State, which job would you take? Florida State. Okay, I agree. Yeah, Florida State. Uh, if you get Texas A&M or Florida State, which job would you take? Florida State because I'm in the SEC West. I know Florida State has more money, but at Florida State, I'm really just dealing with Clemson for the most part. Nobody else is scaring yeah, yeah. me in this league. Yeah. So that's, that, 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 is, that is why you like Florida State from the standpoint of it doesn't take a ton for them to be number two in that league. Sure. If they just are efficient in themselves, they're number two in that league behind Clemson. 
You can have I. And how much of Clemson is Clemson, and how much of Clemson is Dabo? That's a good question. I don't know. I talked to someone today who thinks Clemson is going to, his words, I think you're going to see that pop a little. The bubble pop really? a little. Yeah. Starting next season, that Clemson's going to take a little step back. We'll see. I don't know. Beats me. I'm, I'm, I'm not a Clemson insider. I couldn't tell you. Florida State or Texas? Texas. I'm in the Big 12. What's that mean for you? Uh, I don't know. I think Texas is a more stable program than Florida State. Florida State looks weird to me. Iowa or Florida State? Florida State, stop. Iowa knows who it Quit. is. Quit. No, stop. Stop, yeah. stop, 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 stop. Stanford or Florida State? Florida State. USC or Florida State? <laughs> SC. Yeah. SC. It's but, not, I mean, that. But okay. I mean, but that's, it's not a top 10 job. Well, no, it's not a top 10 job. It's top 15 job. I'll throw a crazy one at you. And think about it. Think about it for a minute before you just knee-jerk answer. Utah or Florida State? Urban oh, stop. Marcus. Who's winning? Who's won over the more? Their recruiting ceiling is 15 spots higher. Give me the players. But Florida, Florida State State's can. not getting the players' chase. But they can. Uh, they're not. They can. They're not. Florida's a star Utah right now. is not out recruiting Florida State. They're in the middle of freaking nowhere. They're not... They're not they're not. No. ULM or Iowa. Well, no one can compete with ULM. Stop. Oh, you want Florida over Florida State all day long? Oh, tomorrow. not even oh, close. Oh my god, oh, my god. <laughs> dude! Stop. All day, <laughs> twice Sunday, four times Tuesday. Yeah, Florida State could, in theory, they can they can sign top five classes. Mm, we'll see. Well, Taggart was recruiting okay. He just couldn't coach worth a lick. And administratively, it was a nightmare. Yeah. I take Florida State over Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I think the Miami thing's over. Yeah, it just, that doesn't. That's toast. That doesn't do much for me. Well, it depends what we're trying to do. If you're just trying to go nine and three, then Florida State's better than a lot of programs. Are we trying to win the thing? What I'm are we doing? talking about top programs. If, you can, if, if you're the coach and you can have a job, which job do you want with all of the things that factor in? And one of the things that factors in at Florida State is that they don't know who they are and they expect the coach to come in and compete for the national championship. And they're not a national championship program, which makes it not so good of a job. To me, it's what makes the Ole Miss job a great job. A repeat, a great job. Because all seriousness, everybody everybody, be honest with me here in the chat. There's 560 of you here with us, so give you a minute to answer. If I offered you a program that over 10 years averaged eight and one-half wins a season, averaged, would you take it? Would you be happy? What number? Eight and a half over a 10-year period. So you average eight and a half, three and a half. Yes. Thrilled? Are you Are you thrilled? Well, I mean, it's 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 a better 10-year period than Ole Miss has had in its history since the 60s. Get you fired at Auburn. I, not what I said. Get you a statue at Ole Miss. Makes the Ole Miss job a great job. And if you're a consistent eight and a half win program, you're going to have the year or two in that ten year span where you are you have a real shot. Real shot. It means you have a couple of years where you go six and six and maybe you had a couple of injuries and you gotta go to the Liberty Bowl or something, but you also have those cool years where you take thirty five thousand people to Orlando for the Citrus Bowl. I was reading the Arkansas rival site this morning. No update beyond anything that we didn't already really know. Um, I texted with Nikki a little bit. I didn't sense that she knew much. Yeah, That's not a knock on her. I'm not sure there's anything to know. She says other candidates who remain in the mix there, Butch Davis, Brian Harson, Willie Fritz, Skip Holtz, and Elijah Drinkwitz. Yeah. Drinkwitz would make some sense there. He just has no name name appeal. Um, Arkansas has an attendance issue. You got to get people. To, you got to fire up a fan base. There, 
as an institution athletically, they just can't get out of their own way right now. They've got so many factions between yeah. donors and Eurocheck, between Little Rock and Fayetteville, just in general. They I mean, appear it, to have rallied behind Musselman. They're getting big crowds at yeah. basketball, and, and the, the baseball program's an elite program. It's a football thing. They can't figure football out from a booster standpoint. Well, because their Little Rock Fayetteville fight makes Jackson Oxford look like a church social. I mean, those two groups yeah. over there hate yeah, one another. They don't like each other. I mean, they're they're fighting with so much over there that I just can't. Um, I am seeing somebody mentioned this. I am seeing that some state people are uh, trying to down act like Kiffin's not a big deal at all. Well, that's so, a good sign. So good sign for Ole Miss. So where Matt Wyatt was like, I don't get what that fuss is. I'm like, there you go, cha-ching. If you're Ole Miss, you'd be happy about that. Yeah, you want state to be belittling your coach, right? If state goes, oh, that's a hell of a good hire. Probably not a good sign. Yeah, that's not true. Apparently some guest on Bounds this morning said Kiffin was holding out hope for Florida State. I've not heard that. I've not even heard that even in the slightest bit of anything. Some of the people I've talked to, if that were true, I think I would have heard it. Or hurt the people one or the other. I mean, if you told me that Mike Norvell pulled a wild card and chose Ole Miss over Florida State, and I don't mean that as any – oh, there it goes again. What are you doing? Well, I hit the phone. I, I hit the computer. I didn't mean to. If, if if you told me that that Mike Norvell pulled a wild card and picked Ole Miss, I don't mean that as an insult at Ole Miss. I just mean if that no one's expecting that. Is that fair? If he did that and you told me that Lane Kiffin suddenly became a candidate at Florida State, I'd buy that. I wonder why when I knock it over, and it's stacked up on a bunch of books, I wonder why when I knock it over, it does what it does. What do you think? Oh, did it mess up again? Yeah, look at it. Well, because it's not straight the same way. It's not It's not even on your thing correctly. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There we go. It's all good. Yeah, you're... you're Let me you, see, there it goes again. Well, yeah, it's not right. I have to hold it for a minute. I hope I didn't break it. I think I broke it. Do you really? I don't know. I mean, I'll look at it when we're done. But can you? No, there, there it goes. Turn my camera off for a minute so people aren't getting equilibrium issues. There it goes. You good now? Yeah. I mean, it's been messed up all day, kind of. So. By the way, uh, congratulations to Tom Allen. Seven-year contract at almost four million bucks at Indiana University. Yeah, absolutely. Great fit. Super happy for him. Great guy. Big Ten likes fits. You're a Big Ten guy. Big Ten's big on fits. Every school is looking for a fit. Tom Allen's a perfect fit there. They don't do a lot of, hey, here's the sexy. Th-. It's it's all fit in the Big Ten. It's grain. Yeah, corn. Not, pretty risk averse. Meat and just, potatoes. Hey, let's let's just find our let's just find our guy. Meat and potatoes. Let's have some fried chicken and mashed potatoes. It really kind of is. I mean, yeah. it's go get you a burger. Works for some of them. Sure. Yeah. Take our uh, last break. Kirk you Parent know, says uh, hello. Well, no, no kidding. Tell you about visit Oxford. Visit OxfordMS.com. Go to the website. See all the calendar events, what's going on this week and the holiday season in general, whether it's the Elf Scavenger Hunt, the Holiday Village, Santa at Visit Oxford, and much, much more. December in Oxford's like no other with brilliant holiday decor. Lights on display, which you can enjoy riding through the carriage in downtown, viewing the Christmas tree lighting, the historic Oxford Square, and much more. Again, visit OxfordMS.com, and as January gets here, a lot of pop-up events. Pop up OxfordMS.com for those details. A little uh, Butch Davis uh, rumor. And by the way, there's a great question here that I want to touch on in a minute. Have you, have you kept up with the Peloton ad scandal? A little bit. Okay, I, want to talk I, to, I know a very basic I want to talk it. about it because I, I think people have lost their minds. Um. We're also brought to you by the Weston Jacksons, Marriott Property, downtown Jackson, where you can uh, rejuvenate yourself at uh, Soul Spa. And you can also uh, imbibe a little bit, have a nice dinner at Estelle Wine Bar and Bistro. They also have breakfast, lunch, and Sunday brunch. Chef Caden's offerings are terrific. You'll love it. Stop by the Weston Jackson uh, today. Podcast also brought to you by John Edwards of Regency Travel Incorporated in Memphis. When this is all over and you say, you know what, I need a vacation. Cool. Call John. He's part of Virtuoso. It's a worldwide network of travel partners that allows John to supply his clients with added values and unique benefits that are simply not available to other travelers. John, uh, all you have to do is get in touch with him and uh, send him some parameters, give him a budget, 
Uh, Jay Tate's thinking about taking a trip to London and Paris, for example, with, with his wife and, and daughter. And I said, call John, give him a budget. Don't just leave it open and did say, I'm willing to spend X. And he'll maximize those dollars for you. 901-494-3387 or Edwards at regencytravel.net. First-time clients can save $50 off their first booked trip. Just by telling John you heard about Regency Travel on the podcast. We're also brought to you by Grenada Nissan. Grenada Nissan is in Grenada, Mississippi, just off Interstate 55. They've got a complete selection of new and previously owned Nissan vehicles. Go in, test drive one today. Tell Gene and Sandy and the people there at Grenada Nissan that you heard about Grenada Nissan on this podcast, and you'll get Rebel Savings on top of the already great deals at Grenada Nissan. It's GrenadaNissanUSA.com. And we're brought to you by Harry Alexander. Harry is an Oxford-based REMAX Legacy Realty agent, big part of Savannah Square. It's a new nine-acre development, seven-tenths of a mile from the Oxford downtown square, conveniently located east of North Lamar, just a short stroll from the Midtown Shopping Center. What you do is you give Harry a call, say, hey, I want to look at some of the homes that are in different stages of development. I want to check out the model home at 215 William Street. Go to the website, savannasquareoxford.com, and you can reach Harry at 662-801-5621. And we're brought to you by Oxford University Bank, OUB, locally owned and operated right here in Oxford. When you deposit money at OUB, that money and the vast majority of the bank's profits go right back into the Oxford community. OUB gives you the comfort of home, all the benefits the big mega banks provide, all the technology and products you can want, all with a personal touch, OUB is home to Casasa. It's the absolute best cash checking account. And with Casasa, OUB will pay customers 2.5% interest on their balances up to $50,000 and refund ATM fees nationwide. They also offer online bill pay and mobile check deposit using the online app. To learn more about OUB, check out liveoxfordbankoxford.com or call 662-234-6668. OUB is FDIC insured. Okay, so what do you got? So the Peloton ad, he gives her a Peloton, and of course she's a- For like Christmas? For Christmas. Okay. And she's already pretty fit, because it's a commercial. They're not going to film it over the course of a year. She's already fit, and she she does this vlog for him, basically, where she's like, hey, first day, and all that stuff. And then at the end, she's like, I I never knew how much this would change me. Thank you. And, of course, everybody's upset. You can't give your wife that for a Christmas present. Does, did they even consider that possibly, possibly in this fake married couple's life, exercise was a really big deal to her, and he knew that she had wanted a Peloton, and they talked about how cool it would be to get a Peloton. And so he got her a Peloton, and she thanked him by showing him how much she used it. And she, I, Give me a freaking break, man. No, because that, that 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 wouldn't be a reason to get offended, and you need a reason to get offended. Why does everybody have to be offended by every single thing? It's an if you don't is is the problem because I get I get it. I mean, you probably wouldn't want buy your wife an iron for Christmas, but I well, no, unless she told me I want an iron. Yeah. I mean, no, I know. I'm in this scenario, it's a married couple. He's not saying, "Hey, babe, lose some weight. Here's a bike." Nope, odds are she's been saying, I love my spin class, but I hate having to drive over there and get in traffic and then I have to drive back and change and all that stuff. Maybe she said, you know, Jim, have you seen those those, those Pelotons? Those look so cool. And I talked to my friend Jamie and she's got one. And so he buys her a Peloton. And she's genuinely excited. Is that not possible? They're gonna start paying you for advertising for too long here. I like my Peloton. Gotta have I'll give you, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you an example. Yeah. Yesterday, I ran out of time to go to the gym. It was a long day. I was on the phone. I had to take Carson to soccer. And when I got back, I had about a one hour window, mm-hmm. and I did a, I did Peloton for an hour. It was nice. It's nice. Got done, kind of refreshed myself a little bit, you know, and got back to work. If I'd had to go to the gym, I wouldn't have had time. And so for me, the Peloton's been worth the investment. If it's not worth the investment to you, that's cool. 
If someone's putting a gun to your head and saying you must buy a Peloton or else, call the police. Peloton stock, though, took a tumble. On After that? that? Yeah, because every... Oh, my God. I was so offended. So offended. It's just dumb. Oh, Your Bears won last night. Bears win, baby. Carson was running around the house going... He was doing this... Really? Yeah, and going, go, Mitch! Mitch looked good. I said, you can build my Cowboys are a train Cowboys, wreck. They are bad. They are a train wreck. <laughs> Maybe Jason Garrett can go coach Arkansas. <laughs> Did you see... Sorry. I I love his Twitter feed because it makes me laugh. <laughs> the Barry McCockin or Twitter feed. <laughs> what did he do? He said that Dak Prescott got super emotional in the locker room and threw his helmet into a mirror and broke the glass. And <laughs> His subsequent tweets after that were Jerry Jones made Jason Garrett eat a piece of the glass <laughs> to keep his job. But there were two or three national people that retweeted the first tweet. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. I love it every time. It makes me laugh so hard. Because he's like, at what point do you not realize this guy is total satire? Was that day you responded to him? Yeah. Who died for the marijuana overdose? (laughs) (laughs) Please pray for my nephew. This is what delirious looks like, ladies and gentlemen. I took it took me ten minutes to recover from that that day. <sighs> <laughs> he said, "Done, bless you or blessings or whatever." Yeah, that he always yeah, yeah. Did. Oh my god! Uh, all right, we could rattle on, but I think that's probably about it for the day. Oh, Miss us have a basketball game tomorrow. Great, there'll be something. <laughs> yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. Whatever. They should probably win. So. I hope nobody's expecting a ton of coverage yeah. leading up to that game because I. Uh, it's it's not going to happen. Yeah. So we'll uh, have a hand it raised is cool. guys. Rod Barnes coming back to Oxford. That yeah, is yeah, a cool. Yeah. That it's is good. a cool story. Hand raised guys Saturday night is the guess, um, barring just mass chaos, and even then we'll have it. It'll just be later on. So expect some type of uh, production from us on Saturday. Stay locked in rebelgrove.com. Appreciate all the new listeners, especially in the live chat this morning, because that's pretty big numbers. We're uh, getting going. So uh, thanks to all of you, and we will talk to you again uh, sometime soon, probably tomorrow.